Oh no! Oh. Hello there, welcome to Cartooning with Paul. Today we're gonna do something different. Today, we're going to sculpt. Ooh, and we're all very impressed, right guys? The character I'm going to be sculpting will be Dodger from Oliver and Company. While it was a sleepy hit in 1988 for the Walt Disney Studios, it's one of my favorites. This was a film that revitalized the animation studio and really pumped up those animators to get ready for The Little Mermaid. So we've got an obstacle to start with. Uh, I don't have any decent model sheets of Dodger from Oliver and Company. I've got some really low-grade images that I found on the internet, but, you know, nothing of any real value. But in today's day and age, we've got modern technology. We've got home video release. We've got the internet. I don't use storybooks or coloring books for reference, and I don't use any fan art, uh, because I really want this to be as accurate as possible. So what I will do is I will either find stock images on the internet, or I can use production stills from the film itself. That will be your best bet. So let's start sketching. Now I haven't drawn Dodger in quite a while. I have to re-familiarize myself with the drawings of the character. So I have plenty of reference in front of me and if I need any more for a different uh, angle, I'll just pull out the movie and I'll pause it whenever I need to. So you'll see here I'm drawing a very basic, uh, only two pose head turn around here. And then uh, just draw different uh, poses and positions until I find something that works well for me. I like the side angle of Dodger's body with his head turned. I may alter this a little bit. So we find a sketch that works for me and we'll go from there. Okay, so now we've got a pretty decent sketch here, right? Uh, this is exactly the way I want the character to look once it's finished. We're going to get as close to this as possible. Uh, during the sculpting, I will be referring back to the film for reference when needed, but for the most part, I know exactly how I'm going to tackle this. So the first thing we need to do is figure out where our wire armature is going to sit. I can see through this paper just fine. So I'm going to, I'm going to take my pencil here and we're going to figure out where the wire armature is going to rest inside this. Now a wire armature acts as a skeleton for the statue. It gives strength and stability to the statue while you're sculpting it. Without this, um, you'll find that gravity will pull down on the piece while you're working on it. Not only that, but your tools and your hands, they're going to be twisting, pulling, pushing the clay all around, and the wire armature keeps things nice and steady for you. All right, now we can plan uh, with the supplies we need. So I've got my piece of wood here, and I just got this at your local craft store, as well as armature wire. All right, so now we have to figure out where exactly we're going to put the holes. Um, because Dodger is facing this way, his head is going to be overlapping a little bit, uh, which is going to give it some weight. So I'm going to want to put the dog a little in on the wood. I think I might put the holes here, nice and close together, not too close, because we want some stability with the wood as well. And then I'm going to want to put in, uh, let's see, the back paw will be right about here and that front paw I'm gonna want placed right about here so the body will be on a bit of an angle his head will overlap it a little bit and we've got his other paw that is not on the ground at all so that doesn't even um, it won't even matter here all right, now I just have to drill the holes in and um, start snaking these, this wire through. All right, I'm back. I just drilled two holes for each leg of the dog, so I've got six holes total. I've got everything I need to get started. I've got my sketch. I've got my plan for the wire armature. I've got my wire. 
I've got my tools to help me cut and form the wire. I've got my aluminum foil and I've got my clay. We'll get into the aluminum foil later, but for right now, we've got to form this armature. So let's get started. In figuring out your wire armature, first, I like to loop it in from the bottom. I create a little recess channel in between the two holes to make sure that the wire can loop in without sticking out of the bottom. You want to make sure that you don't risk damaging any future furniture you may put this on top of. So what we do is we twist the wire to give it a little more strength. You don't want to over twist because the more manipulation you put on the wire, the more likely you could possibly break the, the metal. So you twist it just enough. If you need to give it a little more strength, you can always twist another strand down below and and make it a little stronger that way so now we're gonna you'll see that I am combining and I am connecting the separate wires to make the body form and I'm very carefully going over my wires uh, with more wire it'll just make it stronger but you do have to be cautious because it also makes it thicker and if you have thin areas of your sculpture, you're going to risk cracking of the clay. So we've got three legs in here now, and I'm connecting with more wire. See, I think you'll see a theme here, more wire, the stronger the sculpture. Now what I'm putting in here is that fourth leg that won't be connected to the base. So I'm going to make that nice and sturdy. Okay, so we have finished the armature stage. We've got the very canine shaped legs here. Uh, we've got a lot of stability here in all three to make up for the fact that we don't have any weight distributed on this leg. We've got his long neck into his head and we've given a little stability for his snout, which protrudes a little bit and there's gonna be a lot of weight on that. So we wanna make sure that there's plenty of stability here in the wire. So now we're ready for the next step, which is aluminum foil to wrap around the armature and beef it up a little bit so that we don't use too much clay on the sculpture. So we're going to rip off little pieces of aluminum foil at a time and we're going to form it around the wire. Now, because this wire is nice and pliable, we can move it out of the way a little bit. And, uh, doo -doo -doo. Now, now that I've done that, you wanna pack it down. You want to make sure that you don't ruin the integrity of the wire armature. But it is very important that we kind of squeeze this in. Because you don't want this to be the same thickness as the sculpture. Uh, it's also important to keep in mind. Let's see. Um, yes, Dodger is a cartoon dog, but they still follow the... the uh, anatomy of a, of a real dog here so give him room for his rib cage and his belly and I'm really going to pack this in for the legs uh, okay okay guys so here we are we've got our beefed up uh, armature and I'm pretty confident in this um, in this pose I think the proportions are fine, and I think the, the, the pose is pretty strong. Um, we want to make sure before you start adding clay that you've packed in this aluminum foil uh, as much as you can. Because you really, this isn't supposed to form the statue, this is supposed to help uh, minimize the clay and strengthen the, uh, the armature underneath. So, I think we're good to go. Let's add clay. Now, when working with this particular kind of clay, it comes in layers. This is the extra firm clay, so you'll find that you have to play with it a little bit to soften it up. 
There will be times where this clay will be extra difficult to soften. So what I do is grab my rolling pin that I have specifically for the clay. Don't use the one in your kitchen. Now this particular kind of clay can be found at most art supply and craft stores. It comes in one pound boxes and they retail for about $16 these days. They've got discount coupons in, in all of the store apps. Um, you want to make sure that you don't go cheap on your clay if you're planning on keeping this sculpture around for a little while. I find this clay is very much worth the money. So now I'm ready to start applying some of this clay. Uh, you want to make sure that this is nicely packed down. You'll notice that I put my sculpture on top of a Lazy Susan, which is terrific for easily turning this statue so you can take a look at all the, uh, the different angles. I find it easiest to place your sculpture in your lap while you're working on it, but for the purposes of getting it started, I do like to place it right on the Lazy Susan and get that form in how I want it. Now you see I've got all these sculpting tools here. Your sculpting equipment doesn't have to be expensive. A lot of this stuff isn't very. Uh, but one of my favorite tools was given to me several years ago. And what it is, it is a, an old used dental tool. Uh, the, uh, the ends had broken off. And I'll tell you, this is the greatest tool from my sculpting. It's my go-to.
la -di -da. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're aware when I upload my next video. If you'd like to draw with me, I've got some videos right down here for you. I want to thank you so much. If you like this video, please let me know because I've got another one that's just teeming in my head. It's going to be epic. So thank you again for joining me. And until the next video, we'll see you later. Hey, man, if this is torture, chain me to the wall.